Hello and welcome to another Frontier Precision Tech Talk. In this video, we're going to be covering the RealWorks Forensics workflow. We're going to start with importing the file from the data collector, doing a cloud to cloud registration if we need, a point cloud cleanup, and then export an E57 file for the Forensics Reveal software. We're going to start this video by covering the import process for Trimble RealWorks. All right, so we're going to start by importing the JXL file. So we're going to click import and then open and then browse to the folder that contains the data from the data collector that we transferred over to the computer. Okay, so I'm going to select the JXL file, press open. You'll see in the lower left hand corner, your process bar. And then you'll see the status change to colorizing points. That means it's going to apply colors to each of the pixels in the point cloud. If you did not capture any panoramas with the SX10, then the colorizing point status will not appear. Alternatively, you could press the escape button to stop the colorizing process. You will see the ready status in the lower left hand corner. You're going to see in your workspace, your project, and then the list below with the containing files. This portion of the video is going to cover point cloud registration using a cloud to cloud comparison. We need good overlap in order to do this successfully. And we only need to do this if we had a free station scan that wasn't tied in with the rest of our data. So to start, we're going to want to make sure that we are in the registration mode. In the top left hand corner, there's a drop down. Just make sure it says registration instead of production. Then we'll click on the registration tab and choose cloud based registration. Now, if you're unable to choose cloud based registration, click the project, the word project in your workspace first. So once the cloud based registration opens up, we can choose a reference cloud and a moving cloud. Remember, the moving cloud is the one that we are trying to fit to the rest of our data. Now we're going to pan around, rotate, and find commonalities in one point cloud to another. And we can do up to three point pairs. Okay, so I'm going to just rotate and find a good spot, maybe on the corner of this door. Corners of things work very well. And I'm going to click on the pixel in the point cloud. And then I'm going to move over to my other point cloud. This is my moving station. And find the same point. So we need to have good overlap when we do these scans, if we are ever going to want to use the cloud-based registration. Now on the lower pane of my window, I will see the results. You see the different colors that represent the moving cloud and the reference cloud. We just want to make sure that we that the two line up and everything looks like it does in real life. So the next thing I'll want to do is go back over to my toolbar and choose the refine button. The refine button is going to process through the entire point cloud and just kind of do some extra checks and give you a, a slightly better result. You can see your error and your overlap. I'm going to add or apply the moving cloud to the reference and then click close to close the tool. Now we could have done up to three point pairs. So if the first one did not work, we would want to choose another point pair and then another one on top of that until we get the best results. Now I'm looking at my data here and I can see everything's lining up the way I want it. So now I'm finished with uh, registration. The next part of this video is going to cover some of the RealWorks point cloud cleanup tools. These tools are going to be helpful for you to export just what you need for your diagramming. So we need to start by changing from registration mode into production mode. I'm going to turn on my project cloud by clicking on the light bulb and zooming into the area that I want to clean up. 
Okay, so I want to use my segmentation tool. I need to click on my project cloud in the list and then choose segmentation. Then now I can use a polygon method or a rectangle and also a circular um, selection method to select certain parts of the point cloud in choosing either in or out from the toolbar. I'm going to keep working at this from different angles. Uh, perhaps I need to just select a, a certain room of the entire point cloud, kind of separate that out or segment that out, um, and kind of just get where I want to be with my final point cloud. I'm going to click the Create button in the toolbar and then choose Close. Now all I should see on my screen is what was left on uh, my screen from my, from my previous view. So at this time, I'm going to click Edit and perform an auto classification whether I'm outdoors or indoors. Once I've selected what I want to classify, I'm going to press Extract. Now you should see in your list the new layers. On your screen you should see the layers or the classifications colorized by their proper region. And we can turn on and off those different regions if we want by clicking on the specific uh, light bulbs in your list. The final part of this video is going to cover exporting the point cloud to an E57 file. Exporting is very easy. All I need to do is select the layers in my list that I want to export. So if I want just the floor, ceiling, walls, and remaining, I'm going to select those, click Export, and click Export Selection. Now I need to find a spot to save on my hard drive. Give it a name. And then I want to indicate a file type .e57. Forensics Reveal Software only accepts an E57 at this time. And then I want to export intensity and RGB values and click export. That will do it for today's Tech Talk. If you have any questions regarding this workflow, please reach out to us at one of our phone numbers here. Hope you found this beneficial and will join us again next time. Thank you and have a good day.